Chapter Six of Alice in Blunderland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Lars Rolander. Alice in Blunderland, an iridescent dream by John Kendrick Banks. Chapter Six: The Department of Public Verse. I think, said the hatter, that before we go any further, we would better show Miss Alice our municipal poetry factory. The whistle will blow very shortly, and our divine Aflatus dynamo will shut down. So, if she is to see that feature of our work, now is the time to do it. Yes, said the march hare, although the office is in some confusion owing to your recent municipal order number twenty thousand three hundred and sixty seven making alabasam rhyme with malingatoni and extending the number of lines in the municipal quatrains from four to twenty three the employees are finding considerable difficulty in making twenty three line quatrains and at least half the force have gone home suffering from acute attacks of brainstormitis it'll do em good laughed the hatter a good brainstorm may result in a few of them being struck. Come along, Miss Alice, and we'll show you our city poets at work. I don't think I understand, said Alice. What is a city poet? He bears the same relation to municipal poetry that a white wing bears to the street cleaning department, explained the hatter. Two years ago the city took over all the verse-making enterprises of Blunderland, appointed a municipal laureate, otherwise a commissioner of public verse, and started him along with the department. He employs 16,743 poets who provide all the poetry that is consumed by our people. It has resulted in great good for everybody. Poetry is cheaper by eight cents a line than it used to be, and, as you may have guessed from what the March Hare has just said, we give larger measure than was the custom under the private ownership of Pegasus. Quatrains have been increased from four lines to twenty-three, and the old stingy fourteen-line sonnet has been enlarged to fifty-four lines. We have also passed an ordinance requiring that poems shall say what they mean, which is a vast improvement on the old private control method whereunder anybody was allowed to write rhymes which nobody could understand, like that thing of Miss Aretusa Spinks, for instance, called Aspiration. Remember that? I don't think I ever heard it, said Alice well it went this way said the hatter and striking a graceful attitude he recited the following lines called aspiration my arethusa spink down by the purple opalescent sea flung like a ribbon limp athwart the sky a rose lay blooming on the restless lea while sundry birds came shattering sweetly by "'Twas then my soul that all too long had slept, "'awoke from out its syridicident nap crept, "'down where the pink-cheeked crocus blossoms "'from out fair nature's over-bounteous lap, "'and cried aloud, alas, what hath betold! "'What dream is this that, like the ambient brook, "'forbids the mind to face the solemn goad, "'and know itself forsook? The hatter paused. Well, said Alice, slightly puzzled. That's all there was to it, said the hatter. It was printed in one of our magazines, and within forty-eight hours the ambulance from the insane asylum was called out seven hundred and thirty-seven times by people who had gone crazy trying to find out what it meant. It capped the climax. I called a special meeting of the Common Council, to take the matter up purely as a matter of public health, and before I went to bed that night they had passed, and I had signed an act giving the control of the verse industry to the city, and taking it out of the hands of irresponsible, unlicensed, independent poets. 
and a good job it was too, said the March Hare. And you choose one of the best poets in town for the commissioner, I suppose, suggested Alice. No, we didn't, said the Hatter. I didn't want any moonshine in a city department, and no poet is a good businessman. I picked out a very successful haberdasher in the sixth ward for the delicate business of organizing the department, and he has done most excellent work. We found that just as a first-class confectioner made a splendid manager of our gas plant, and a successful hokey-pokey merchant had the required push to keep our trolley systems going, so the haberdasher had the precise kind of genius to manage the poets. He won't stand any nonsense from them, and any poem that he can't understand is immediately thrown into the civic waste-basket, taken to the municipal ferry, and used for fuel to run the boats. I guess we burn nineteen tons of refuse verse a day, don't we, alderman? Uh, about that, on the average, said the March Hare. Sometimes it gets as high as twenty tons, and occasionally it falls off to sixteen. But using these rejected manuscripts in place of coal has reduced the loss on the ferry about thirty-eight dollars a year in real money. How much is that in bonds? asked Alice slyly. Oh, let's see, said the Hatter, his face getting very red. Well, I should say on a basis of forty-three to one-third per cent to one thirty-eight dollars would come to about ninety-seven thousand three hundred forty-seven point eighty-three in Sir Debenture ten per cent certificates, exclusive of the cost of printing, advertising, and the number we give away as sample copies. Quite a saving, said Alice. Yes, said the Hatter. We save all we can. Economy in real money is our watchword. We never spend a cent where a bond will serve the purpose. By this time Alice and her hosts had reached the building occupied by the Department of Public Verse, and upon entering its spacious doorway the party were greeted by the Commissioner, the Haberdasher, to whom Alice was promptly introduced. He reminded her very forcibly of her old acquaintance Bill the Lizard, but she was not sure enough on this point to recall their previous meeting when she had so tactlessly kicked him up through the chimney flue of the Wonderland Cottage. "'Well, Mr. Commissioner,' said the Hatter, "'how are you getting along?' "'Pretty well, Mr. Mayor,' replied the Commissioner. "'We've just finished the six-line couplet for the new chewing-gum bonds.' good said the hatter how does it go rather neatly i think said the commissioner and he read the following we promise to pay this bond some day if of the stuff we got enough and if we haven't pray don't despond for we'll pay it off with another bond fine said the hatter you strike a very lofty note in that and how do the new limericks work We've finished number 3,907 of series X, set B, said the commissioner. I'll send for Wiggins, who wrote it, and let him read it to you himself. A pressure of an electric button brought the smiling Wiggins into the office. Wiggins, the mayor would like to hear that new limerick of yours, said the commissioner. Thank you, sir, said Wiggins. It runs this way, Your Honor. There was an old lady named Jane who sat on a fence at Shawhari. A rooster came by and crew like the Jews, but Jane never scared for a cent. That's great, said the Hatter. Don't you think so, Miss Alice? Why, yes, said Alice, but does it rhyme? Perfectly, replied the Hatter. That is under our system when we organized this department to facilitate business and avoid the waste of time looking for rhymes we legalized such rhymes as shawhari and scent and buy and juice 
by that act we found that where one man could only turn out eight hundred limericks a day under the old system any able-bodied poet can write three thousand in the same number of hours that's very good wiggins he added turning to the workman i shall recommend the commissioner to promote you to an inspectorship in the sonnet works thank you sir said the poet as he blushingly bowed himself out here said the commissioner opening a door leading into a long darkened chamber here young lady is our thinking department alice passed into the darkness and dimly made out a half hundred long-haired individuals sitting in comfortable morris chairs their forefingers pressed hard against their brows and their eyes gazing fixedly out into space these men and women think the thoughts which our municipal poetry is designed to express the commissioner continued a thought once seized by any one of them is written down upon a pad and then taken into this next room where it is classified and assigned to the line cutters who turn out the first draft in the rough then when this is done it is sent to the rhyming room where the lines are made to end in rhymes and finally it goes to the polishing room where the poem is made ready for publication it is a wonderful system said the hatter it not only improves the quality of our poetry but in campaign times it is a great help since we control absolutely all the campaign poetry when i run for mayor next fall to succeed myself there won't be a single poem written on the other side that ought to be a great help said alice yes said the hatter it will be every employee in this department will not only vote for me but will work for me as well same way in the gas plant and the trolley in fact in all the city departments it is only another evidence of the very great value of municipal ownership it is uncertainty in political times that upsets business but with the municipality in control of all these departments from gas to poetry there is no uncertainty about who will win so that business is not unsettled by it wonderful said alice by the way mr commissioner you'd better start the rhyming bureau on the search for rhymes to hatter at once said the mayor we don't want to be caught unprepared at the last minute the list is being compiled now replied the commissioner we already have matter batter tatter smatter patter ratter spatter and scatter fine chortled the hatter don't forget chatter put in alice thank you i'll make a note of it said the commissioner and snatter growled the march hare gloomily who evidently felt that somebody ought to be looking for rhymes to the march hare as well what does snatter mean demanded the hatter frowning it is a corrupt form for snatcher retorted the march hare one who snatches everything he can lay his hands on without regard to whether it's his by divine right or not i guess they can use it in poems calling attention to your civic virtues except by unanimous vote of the common council of a my veto snatter stays out of the municipal vocabulary returned the hatter coldly your own confession that it is corrupt is enough to condemn it with me i wouldn't use batter either mr mayor said the commissioner batter is dough and we haven't got any worth mentioning it is also to wax slam bang bust smack retorted the hatter so your recommendation is not accepted seems to me i can almost hear the campaign clubs singing as they march oh the noble noble hatter ain't he grand how his enemies do scatter through the land how his foemen he doth batter with their idle gloomy chatter on this municipal matter beats the band oh gee ejaculated the march hare do you call that poetry sir i call it truth returned the hatter and poetry is truth just as art is truth 
and if you don't believe it all you've got to do is to try and run against me next fall on that issue i'll beat you to a standstill of course you will sighed the march hare but you wouldn't but for that last ordinance you jammed through while i was off on my vacation what was that demanded the hatter giving the election commission absolute control over the votes and then appointing yourself election commissioner ex officio said the march hare i don't believe that municipal control of the ballot is constitutional well it will be constitutional said the hatter dryly when demanded the march hare when we secure municipal control of the constitution said the hatter i'll make it constitutional if i have to rewrite the whole blessed constitution myself whereupon the hatter walked majestically forth into the street once more and alice and the march hare together with the white knight followed meekly in his train End of chapter six the department of public verse read by lars rolander